So Hansen's gone. And now Night City's underbelly is a power vacuum. Everyone's scrambling to fill the void and I'm just trying to lay low. But with Songbird and Max Tax hands and the neural matrix still out there, I can't just sit around and wait for things to happen. Reed suggested I find a netterner to hack into the NCPD systems, but I can't trust him completely. Instead, I'm gonna reach out to Mr. Hans. He's a self-serving guy, but at least I know what to expect from him. The thing about Reed is he's always got an angle. He's always looking out for himself, and he's not afraid to use other people to get what he wants. I've seen him do it time and time again. I remember when we first met, he was all about using me to get to Songbird. He didn't care about me or my well-being. He just wanted to use me as a pawn in his game. And then there was the whole thing with the Netrunners. Please. If you've ever thought of starting a family, I would advise you to think twice. See, my client Michael Maldonado did not, and had a son that seems to cause him oh so much woe indeed. The matter's a rather delicate one. Michael wants to talk it over in person with you, and you alone. I favor clients with fewer question marks over their heads, but Maldonado offered extra. Thus, an exception was made. I'd like you to see him. See what this is about. Details attached. Hey, oh, Mikey! This piece of old scrap ate my eddies again! Can't play like this, man. When are you finally gonna fix it? Reed didn't have any problem Killer. executing them in cold blood. It didn't matter to him that they were just human beings. All that mattered to uh, him was Michael getting Maldonado. what he wanted. V I know that Reed is dangerous, and I don't trust a... him. I'm not going to let him use me again. I'm via Merc, and not going to be anyone's oh, pawn. I'm going to call the shots from now on. Glad you could make it. Fixer said you can turn around even the most hopeless of cases. How hopeless we talking? It's about my son, Eric. Boy runs a motorcycle repair shop in Haywood. Totally legit operation. Taxes, permits, you name it. But this DA, Georgina Zembinski, she needs her pound of flesh. Wants to turn him into an exemplar. That's where you come in. First things first. This DA, Zembinski. What's her deal? She's as crooked as they come, like everyone else in Night City. Zeminski said she's after some Valentino kingpin. Hector Sacristan was the name, I think. What's Eric got to do with it? Word is he knows Sacristan. Has heaps of dirt that could bring him down. But for that, she needs Eric behind bars. So, she forced me to testify. Now I need you to make it go away. Tell me more about Eric. Mentioned he sells two-wheelers. Fixes him. Little go-getter owns a repair shop in Haywood now. Yeah. Moved out of Dogtown with his mother years ago. Have they seen the kids since? Sure your son's who he says he is? Eric? He's too innocent for this town. That's why they're fixing to take him down. Zimbinski forced you to testify. How, exactly? At first, she seemed... nice. We were sitting, having a normal conversation. She showed me her so-called evidence against Eric. Wanted me to corroborate it. It was bullshit, every last word. Two days later, came back with some badge. Beat the shit out of me, threatened worse for Eric. Then they... put me in front of a camera and I... I told them what they wanted to hear. I was fucking scared. Just go talk to her, you know, the way you people do. Eric's a good kid. He'll get eaten alive in prison. Not if I have anything to say about it. Gonna find her. Have ourselves a little chat. Ah. That's a relief. No hands would entoss me, some bush leaguer. You'll find her at the Heavy Hearts Club. Perfect place for plotting and scheming. And you know that how? That's where she invited me for her heart to heart.
I'm not going to let anyone control me. I'm going to find Songbird, get the Neural Matrix, and make sure that Night City stays in my hands. Just as I was about to head to the Voodoo Boy's dead drop, Mr. Hens calls me with a surprise. There's a gig nearby that needs my attention. Apparently, a guy named Michael Maldonado needs help dealing with a district attorney who's going after his son and his business. I'm not sure what to make of this story, but I'm willing to check it out. Maldonado seems like a decent guy, and I'm not a fan of corrupt cops or dads. So I'll agree to meet with the DA at the Heavy Hearts Club and see if I can get to the bottom of this. I'm always up for a challenge, especially when it means standing up for the little guy against the big guys. You've seen Lizzy Wizzy. Here. <laughs> you sure you got your hat on straight? I know this place is Mr. Han's home turf, so I have to tread carefully. I don't want to cause any trouble, especially not before I had a chance to talk to the DA. You're here by yourself? Where's Walt? Ever since the gods bestowed VIP access on his ass? Poof. Gone. Looking for a customer of yours? DA Georgina Zimbinski. Know her? Can't say I do, but if she's some kind of big shot, probably find her in the booth. Have to ask Jack, though, and him you'll find in the can. As in, like, the shitter? That can? Mm-hmm. Where he does his biz. Where the magic happens. Maybe he'll know her. Uh, okay. Thanks. Sell it at the stadium. It will be fine. What if the city comes looking for us? Let him try. Listen, Jack. That bio Tell them is supposed to come tomorrow. Every last any. You know. Promise. Sunflower guy. Your promises are doing oh, a little stale, sweetheart. Hon. I feel you. Something to numb the pain? Yeah. I'll take three, you know what? Hey, what's good? Looking for something? Jack, right? Heard you're cozy with them gilded folk upstairs. Need a word with a certain dame. Oh, have you now? Well then, ask away. Georgina Zimbinski, Night City DA. Ring any bells? Nah. I could have called upstairs and asked, though. You do that? Oh, slow down. Times it is in all that jazz. Do you what I'm saying? No few suppliers in NC. Not to mention Chooms working doors for the city's primest clubs. Want to expand your enterprise? Or you could tend slinging dope in this dump for the rest of your life. Huh. Offer is tempting. Fine. Keep your heads. I'll consider it an investment in my future. Hey, baby. I'm looking for a clan of ours. Georgina Zimbinski. Yeah. Right. Okay, thanks. My girl saw her. Say she's smoothing with some heavy hitters. Booth four. I'll check it out. Thanks. Hello, Georgina Zempinski. Careful with that one. Careful. Lawyers are not to be trusted. There are any kinds of people worthy of your trust? Of course. Sound technicians.
me. What gives you the right? You're done here. Finished. I'll make damn sure of it. What happened? <laughs> Hell does it look like? Shitbags threw me out of VIP. Shithead bouncers don't know who they're dealing with. They're gonna throw me out? Me? Why'd they kick you out? Well, um, some loser wouldn't stop bothering me, so I bashed his head against the bar a little too hard. Said I was sorry, and I was. Doesn't give security the right to ride me so hard. Did my fair share of VIP treatment. Bouncers get it wrong sometimes. Just go there, tell them who you are. Bound to get an apology, at least. You some kind of shrink now? Words for me is all I'm saying. Bullshit! So why do you waltz in behind the bar and have them carry your VIP ass upstairs? Cause I'm done dealing with those Neanderthals. Now somebody get me a fucking drink! Come on, let's play a game. Slipping into the Vipyria. I'm cloaked by the heavy bass of the music and the dim lighting masking my movements from the prying eyes of the security cameras. The Bargus guards, their bodies heavily augmented with cyberware, are even more heavily chromed than usual, a testament to the heightened tension following Hansen's demise. Clutched tightly in my hand is the suppressed liberty, a relic from Alex whose untimely death still weighs heavily on my conscience. Despite our brief acquaintance, I can't shake the feeling that she possessed a decent core, a stark contrast to her cold-blooded execution of Aurora. with a mix of stealth and precision. I dispatched the Bargus guards one by one, their chrome-plated bodies crumpling to the floor with silent thuds. The suppressed liberty lives up to its reputation, its muffled reports barely registering amidst the pulsating music. Sammy security cameras, their lenses gleaming ominously pose a greater challenge. Utilizing my cybernetic enhancements, I disable them one by one, creating pockets of darkness that facilitate my stealthy infiltration.
deeper and deeper I delve into the VIP area. My senses on high alert, scanning for any sign of the day, Georgia Devemis guy. The urgency to clear Maldonado's son's name and protect his business propels me forward, overriding any lingering apprehension. Do you understand what this means? Uh, and we you will are? be kings of real estate alone. Looking for Georgina Zimbinski. Is she around? Perhaps. That depends who you are. Name's V. Got fresh evidence for a case she's building. Important I hand it to her personally. Well, well, Georgina Zimbinski getting the good folk in Night City to help her in her fight for justice. You'll find her in booth six. Thanks, fellas.
And you are? Georgina Zimbinski. Need to talk to you about Michael Maldonado. That drunk? What about him? Claims he was forced to testify against his son. Need you to wipe it. He wants me to... That cowardly two-faced sack of shit. See? Told you he couldn't be trusted. What exactly did he tell you? You want to frame Mike's son as part of some gang bust? Frame him? Oh, please. Boy's done all the work himself already. Is that right? Kidnapping, extortion, arson, armed robbery. Guess whose rap sheet that is? Eric Maldonado is textbook ganger scum. He belongs in prison. We just needed someone to help him get there. His father, Michael, didn't think twice about choosing Eddie's over his lowlife son. Who's Hector Sacristan? One of the Valentino's top men. Narco millionaire, serial murderer. Two years I've been after him. Eric Maldonado, he's the last domino. But if I want to use him, I need him behind bars. It's Mike's word against yours. Unlike mine, his is worthless. Maldonado doesn't care about his son. He's scared Eric will find out it was his old man who snitched on him. Of course, I can make it so that never happens. I'm listening. Why don't you watch Michael's testimony first? Witness the truth yourself. Final question. On May 16th of last year, Eric Maldonado contacted you by holocall. During your conversation, he admitted that Hector Sacristan shot and killed Marcos Ferreira. He also stated that Sacristan ordered Ferreira's body to be dumped in the Coronado Bay. Can you confirm this is what Eric told you? I... Yes. Yes, I confirm. Excellent, thank you. That will be all. Michael didn't bat an eye when he accepted payment for that testimony. Real entrepreneur. I'll cut right to the chase. I'm offering to anonymize Michael's testimony. Eric will never be the wiser. And if I refuse? Wouldn't advise it. Wouldn't be, uh, safe for you. Mike hired me to do a job. Intend to see it through. Besides, I think you're full of shit. Full of shit? Me? I just showed you proof. Showed me one piece that fits your narrative. Not nearly enough. The testimony. Now. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Let's try this in a language you'll understand. Hank? Ugh, fine. Testimony. There. Deleted and gone. Prem. Thanks. We're done. Now leave. Exiting the Heavy Hearts Club. The pulsating music fading into a distant hum. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled in my gut since the encounter with the Da Georgia Dominski had left a sour taste in my mouth. A stark reminder of the murky underbelly of Night City, where justice was often a matter of power and influence. I'd been hired to intimidate Dombinsky, to force her to drop the case against Maldonado's son. I had done my job using my skills and cybernetic enhancements to neutralize the security guard and coerce Dombinsky into compliance. I couldn't help but question the validity of Maldonado's claims. The confession seemed genuine, and Deminsky's demeanor didn't suggest that she was fabricating the case. But I was a merc, not a judge or jury. My job was to complete the task at hand, not to delve into the intricacies of truth and justice. I had done what I was hired to do, and that was all that mattered. 
My thoughts drifted to the wider implications of my actions. I had essentially obstructed justice, protecting a potential criminal from the consequences of his actions. Was I complicit in his wrongdoings? I pushed those thoughts aside, focusing instead on the immediate future. I had a rendezvous with Mr. Hands, the Netrunner who had tipped me off about the gig. I needed to update him on the situation and collect my payment. Dogtown was a place where lines were blurred, where morality was often a matter of convenience. I had made my choices. I would survive in this unforgiving city, one job at a time, navigating the treacherous waters of power and influence. Justice would have to wait for someone else.